I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will review concepts of domain and range. We will write domain range of functions in interval notation. So interval notation is kind of putting them in these kinds of brackets. It could be it could be open brackets or, or closed brackets, right? So combination of these depending on the situation, right? To begin with, we'll start with the quadratic function y equals to x squared minus 4 and then we're going to modify this. We'll make square root of this function, cube root of this function and reciprocal and then write its dominant range. So that's the whole idea, right? That's the whole idea. I'll use the space to make a rough sketch which will help us to find domain and range. You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Let me sketch y equals to x square minus 4. As you all know, it's a quadratic function, parabola, which has been translated 4 units down. So I could sketch this kind of like this. Right, so that's the parabola, which is x squared minus 4. So this point is minus 4 for us. Clearly, parabola does not have any restriction. We can say x belongs to real numbers as a domain, right? Since we want to write in interval notation, the same thing could be written as from minus infinity to plus infinity. What about range? As you can clearly see, range of this function is greater than or equal to minus 4. So we could say it is from minus 4 to infinity. Now this square bracket means minus 4 is included, right? I hope that's absolutely clear. So that is kind of saying as y belongs to real numbers, where y is greater than or equal to minus 4, right? That's what it means. So that is a set notation. This is interval notation. So further, we'll only write interval notation, okay? Now let's look into the second function, which is square root of this x square minus 4. Square root really means that within the square root we should have positive, right? Non-negative I should say. So that means oh, we are interested in this domain from here towards right and from here towards left and these x-intercepts are minus 2 and plus 2. Correct? Now, so that means the domain is from minus infinity to minus 2. Minus 2 is included, so we'll put a square bracket. Union means or 2 to infinity. So 2 to infinity. You can never include infinity, right? So that becomes the domain. How about the range? For any value, the square root is always positive. So if I were to sketch this, it will be kind of like this, right? So I'm making rough sketches here. And of course, as you know, this point where it intersects will be 1, is it okay? Because 1 square root is 1. Correct. So we could write here that the range is from 0 to infinity. Perfect. Right. Now how about cube root of this function? Now you can find cube root of negative numbers, right? You know, cube root of minus 4 is quite valid. So cube root of minus 4 will be more than 1, less than 2. Cube root of 8 is 2. So let's say somewhere kind of like this. Let's say this is cube root of minus 4, right? Cube root of 0 is 0, so that is another point. Let me use another ink here. So we're trying to sketch cube root function now. Okay. Uh, so, so cube root of minus 4 is like, let's say this, which is cube root of minus 4. Is that okay? 0 is 0. Okay. Cube root of 1 is 1. So, what you see here is that the cube root graph will be kind of 0 here and then it will kind of go here like this and touch at 1. Do you see that? And then like this. Is it okay? Cube root will be slightly lesser than square root. So that is how you're going to get the graph for cube root. Clearly, domain has no restrictions, right? So, so let me write this in red ink. 
So the domain has no restriction. We can say it is from minus infinity to plus infinity. The range has restrictions. It is from cube root of minus 4 to infinity. Do you see that? So that is the range for the function cube root of x square minus 4. Perfect. Now let's do 1 over x square minus 4. Let me uh, make a new graph here for this particular function. So we'll again sketch x square minus 4. Let's select this. Okay. x square minus 4. Now 1 over 0 means we'll get vertical asymptotes, right? Uh, I'll use a different ink here. Let's do this green. Okay. Since this is minus 4, 1 over minus 4, I should write minus 1 over 4. Is it okay? That would be one point. That's a vertical asymptote. Let's say, let's say this is 1, then the graph will be kind of like this. Correct? On this side, the graph will be kind of like this. And these points will be at 1. Is it okay? This is at wherever they intersect. This is minus 1. Things are not to the scale, but I hope you get an idea of how to sketch these graphs. Okay. So from here, you can see that the domain is from minus infinity to this point, which is minus 2. Minus 2 is not included. Union, or you can write or minus 2 to plus 2 or 2 to infinity. So that is the domain. So that means you could write this as x belongs to real numbers. We could write this in set notation x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to plus and minus 2. Is that okay? Because that will make the denominator 0. So you could find this without sketching by equating x square minus 4 to 0, right? You could write this as x square minus 4 should not be equal to 0 or x is not equal to square root, which is plus and minus, or 4, which is plus minus 2, right? So you get this answer. From the graph, you can see that range is all values greater than 0 and less than minus 1 over 4, right? So you could say that range is from minus infinity to minus 1 over 4, or, or you can write union, 0 to infinity, right? 0 to infinity, right? So that becomes the range for reciprocal of x squared minus 1, correct? So, so I hope you understand how to find domain range for quadratic function, square root function, cube root function, and reciprocal function as shown here. Uh, let's move on to a few more videos to understand this topic in greater details. I'm Anil Kumar. Thanks for watching. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Feel free to post questions. Thank you and all the best.